Hey guys, it's me, Mitch, with Warhammer Tactics Series, and today I want to discuss top three leagues of Votan. If you ever had a problem selecting which league you want to play, or you're just starting out collecting leagues of Votan, this video might be very helpful for you to decide. So let's dive in. With one important comment before we start. If you were planning to play another league, the one that didn't get into this top three, it doesn't mean that this league is not playable. Any league, any chapter can be played on a very, very highly competitive level, if that is what you are interested in, if you build a list and learn how to play it well. So this is just my opinion, what I believe is the easiest, the most powerful to play, the easiest to start playing, I mean, so don't be discouraged if that's if you the league that you want to play is not in this top three so great authorian league is my first pick this are these are not in any particular order i don't think that this one is more powerful than the third one it's just how i've uh, set them up in this slideshow so they are the poster boys of the army basically the ultramarines but ultramarines aren't very good and the great authorian league is very good in my opinion the first trade they have is they count as two models each for objectives for control and objectives and five if you're 10 wounds or more and currently in the army there's only one model which is the land fortress which is 10 wounds or more uh, and it will count as five of those so it's a very strong rule with anything that helps you get your objectives and secure them is very good especially on units like pioneers who already have obsec but are low in numbers so you would get uh, an extra ability to secure those objectives even if your squad is depleted and the second again very powerful thing is a typical tau sap reroll so one reroll of one hit or one wound roll the same thing as the emperor's chosen uh host of custodies so it gives you a lot of reliability especially it's strong when you have a lot of different squads with individual strong shots uh, so like in this case when you get a magnum rail rifle in your 10 man squad of troops that's the perfect target for this reroll because it gets you it gives you a chance to reroll for free what you would probably have rerolled anyway with a command point so it saves you command point and gives you ability to do that multiple times during the turn same goes for the vehicles your land fortresses magnum rail rifle shot or your sergeant with a thunder hammer equivalent so basically anything that you really want to hit or to wound is great for this reroll their ancestral judgment is strong it's a flat plus one marker on targets with markers so your targets that already have a judgment token on them uh they count as having one more up to three so if it's one marker it's two actually if it's two markers it's actually three very strong very helpful always good to have also the warlord trade is very strong it's a five plus regain command points when you spend them it's not that strong this ability these abilities are not that strong now as they were in before nephilim because you get less command points and you get less chances to roll that five up so you aren't often you don't always get a chance to use it however there is a very important difference between this trade and the ones that are very prevalent in any in many other books you get an interface echo psychic power in this book which i highly recommend to have uh, and i highly recommend to have grimnir in your in your list and any of your list but we'll talk about that in a separate video so this power gives you an ability to get a command point each turn however it states there that it doesn't count towards our one cp per battle round limit it means that you can actually gain two command points per round using this trait and this psychic power which substantially changes the balance for stratagems and stratagems are very good with, with leagues of votan they are extremely strong very versatile so you really want those command points this combo of command points is one of the th reasons why i would consider playing greater third in league myself the stratagem is a very good one cp1 and it allows you to get a second judgment token on target of your cow's grim efficiency ability so when you can select in your command phase one target that's visible to your cow and the target gets a judgment token so you can get a second judgment token immediately for one command point on the same target and it basically means that it's three judgment tokens considering your ancestral judgment so it's like a very very a reliable way to get a 
three judgment token unit each turn and obviously hitting and wounding on a four plus is no joke so you really want those three judgment token targets in your opponent's army relic is an okay one to be honest not really great because it's a four plus invulnerable and extra minus one ap uh it sounds very good but problem is that most characters you really want to give that to already have a four plus in one so that's wasted and uh, extra minus one ap is good to have but combining those two benefits is very hard so probably the perfect target uh, for the relic would be an iron here champion with the teleport crest so not the shield crest which gives him a four boss and one and plus one to wound but if you really need that teleport crest for some reason but still want to have some survivability on that and here champion that's probably the best target for that relic next is chronos hegemony probably my favorite league because it's the bloody rose of leagues of Wotan, basically making a not very fighty army a very fighty one other traits are plus one attack in the same conditions as the shock assault so it's on the charge when you were charged and on the heroic intervention it's super strong obviously your Cthonian berserks and Anir Hothguard get an extra attack for each guy so it's 10 more attacks per full squad it's a lot of attacks it's much much deadlier obviously extremely good to have and second ability is plus on strength in the same conditions very strong on anything that is not x2 strength weapons because those are mostly wasted unless you are fighting against some very specific targets which nowadays when toughness 9 starts to pop up pop, pop up here and there may not be useless which is good uh but well we'll have to see about that but definitely very helpful on your hearthkin which bumps him up to strength 5 so wounding space marines on threes wounding uh terminators uh death guard terminators on the force very helpful to get at least any a chance to push that attack through because obviously top save will save most of those attacks but maybe something will go through and the sweep mode of the berserker axe gets up to strength six which is a very important threshold as we've discussed multiple times on this channel our ancestral judgment is just good i cannot say that it's bad it's okay it's or it's perfect it's good so it's plus one ap for melee attacks on targets with two judgment tokens on them or more it's not the best because it only helps your melee unlike most other judgment answers to judgment abilities which help both melee and shooting and it requires two judgment tokens to work so you have to get those tokens before you get any benefit from your ancestral judgment which i do not per personally prefer i prefer to get the benefit early because that's how you can uh, get most out of it but it's not bad and it can make your ap0 units like your hotkin um warriors a bit more fighty and they can actually do something to non armor of contempt targets the warlord trait is a glorious one it's probably the best warlord trait for a fighty character there is also a very good one another good one in the main warlord traits it's the one that ignores any feel no pain type rules and gives you reroll to wound but this one is slightly better still even than that one it's a flat reroll to hit in melee which is very important especially on your iron here uh champion and he only has like four attacks base so five on the charge in chronos hegemony and you don't want any of those attacks to miss because they are d3 plus three damage uh, with a crazy hammer so you really want them to hit and you don't want to spend command points on the reroll on that so reroll to hit is just it's it was good in 8th edition, but now in 9th it's just perfect for a character. And plus 1 attack if within engagement range of enemy character monster units. And plus 1 to wound against characters and monsters. So basically he's your guy to kill the nasty stuff. And uh, that's how I feel the Anhir champion should probably operate in, in an army. So I adore this trait in terms of rules and in terms of lore both in fluff. Their stratagem is a simple and a great one. It's one CP exploding sixes to hit, which can be used on any unit. So your troops, your terminators, your berserks, your character, whatever. You can use it anywhere and it costs one command point, no matter how big the squad is. I absolutely adore the stratagem. And when you really need something dead, like you have charged your berserkers in and you want to make sure that they kill off that particular enemy unit, it's the best thing you can use especially with the plus one attack on your side from the 
uh, Kronos Hegemony trait, you will get more chances to roll those sixes. Relic is a good one, uh, but it's a weapon relic. And you know, probably if you've seen any of my videos, you know how you feel about relics and weapon relics in Warhammer 40k. It's a rarity when something like that is worth it, unless you have a very specific character which is geared towards combat, like I'm here champion. Uh, that's where you want to bump up his uh, melee to a maximum, to the maximum you can possibly do to make sure that he does deliver and does destroy stuff that you want him to destroy. For your regular characters, giving them relics uh, that are great weapons, I'm not sure that's the best way to go because characters are usually best in the support position. But anyway, you got that choice with Krogonus Hegemony, so it's a plus one strength sword, AP4, damage 2, and ignores invulnerable save. So very strong, especially if you get like two ancestral judgment tokens on a target and it's AP5. So no, absolutely no save, even if, even if you have a like two up save on your uh, character and the third character you are targeting. Very good, but it depends on your list building strategy. And you run a Surter Regulates. Uh, well, these names are just, they're killing my ton. Uh, they're toughest kids on the block, so they are the iron hands of the Leagues of Votan. They're physically and mentally strong. So their first trait is the most important one. It's flat plus one toughness for the whole army. So it's obviously very strong. It makes your basic infantry toughness five. So like, Custodies like orcs, very, very durable. It's uh, one of the biggest jumps in terms of survivability between toughness 4 and toughness 5. All game uh, weapons uh, in 40k are in some way, shape, or form balanced around toughness 4. So getting to that toughness 5 threshold is very good. Obviously, toughness 9 on your land fortress is strong, toughness 8 on your segators, uh, again, crazy good. Just all awesome. It's a marginal increase in durability for your elite units because those are usually targeted uh, either with strength four with rerolls, which no one gets rerolls to wound against you anyway, so that's good. Uh, or weapons like strength eight, strength nine, plasma, rifles, whatever, which are wounding you on threes anyway. So getting to toughness six is not often helpful, as I've learned playing Death Guard and casting the Trust and Vitality on Blight Lord Terminators. It's not often helpful, but sometimes it does help and getting that automatically on your entire army is obviously great. And trade two is much weaker, obviously, because your first one is so good. Uh, it's the old version of They Shall Know No Fear, so you can reroll morale tests for your units. Not extremely important, but maybe helpful sometimes. And considering the fact that you cannot reroll morale for the command points, that's great. Ancestor Judgment is a good one. So any zero judgment token target counts as one judgment token instead. So it's not plus one like the uh, Great Arthurian League. Uh, it's zero counts as one. It means that you're always auto wounding on sixes to hit and it's good added reliability to make sure that you always benefit from your army's rule, which is, as I said, very important because you want to get that efficiency from the get-go. Their wall of trade is a good classic 5-up track and it's the only uh, survivability trait in the book. So obviously the only guys who would have received that are these survivable guys. Uh, so I like the trait obviously five up shrug is always good to have maybe if you want to build an unkillable iron here champion that's the great a great choice i would probably opt for something that like the reroll to wounds and ignore feel no pains on him but that's my personal preference so good trait to have in your back pocket if you need it stratagem is an awesome one especially for your iron here champion it's a fight on death for just one command point so yeah uh, it's a common joke about Leagues of Votan that they get all the stuff everyone else gets, but just it's slightly better. So every army I know, uh, like Custodies, Space Marines, uh, specifically like Grey Knights, they all pay two command points for fighting on death with characters. Somehow, some way, these guys pay only one. 
Uh, probably there is another book where there is a one CP fight and death. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember that. But tell me if you remember some, such a thing in the comments. But it's just so funny that for some reason they will get that for one command point. So in any case, it's great to have. It gives you a lot of efficiency back from your characters because you can safely just send your Iron Hair Champion straight into the mess of the battle. Make sure to reroll his invulnerable save when it's uh, the most appropriate moment. So giving him extra time to get you points back and then when he eventually succumbs to his injuries just pay one command point and fight with him obviously if he didn't fight yet in the in this fight phase which is possible because he can be charged and killed on the charge and the relic is an odd one uh, it's the old character protection rule so the better version of lookout sir Basically, you cannot target this model if it's not the closest period, period. So it ignores any sniper rules, which ignore lookout, sir. It ignores everything. So you can plop your uh, character in the middle of nowhere at the back of your base, standing there for some reason. Why would you want that? I'm not sure. There is no reason to have a character standing in the middle of nowhere all by himself. Not really. I don't think so. So... I don't recommend to use that relic, but you have that in case you want it. So that's the top three, guys. Uh, tell me what you think. I actually like the fact that the top three that I identified turned out to be very different. So Greater Thurian League is like your universal type of uh, an army. So it can do fighting well enough and can do shooting well enough. It's it's very adaptable. The Kronos Hegemony is obviously the one that is geared towards fighting 100%, which is great to have that option as well. And the, uh, I had to look up the name because I cannot remember it. Urani Surtur reg Regulates, sorry. Urani Surtur Regulates, yeah. <laughs> they are the survivable guys, those that you really want to have if your game plan is based on the fact that you stay longer on the objectives, you stay more than your opponent you can take a punch and then punch back so that's a great thing and i really like the choices we have here tell me which one you prefer tell me which one you like more and maybe if you think there is a better combination there maybe maybe you think there is a league that is much stronger than all of these so i would like to hear that and next week i'll probably make a video about custom leagues so stay tuned and i'll see you next time